Please help me welcome Amar Inamdar. Well, thank you for that introduction. That was fantastic. And some statistics that are already going to steal some of the firepower that we're going to put in front of you over the next five, six, seven, ten minutes. But um, welcome to you all. It's fantastic to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And it's wonderful to see so many wonderful faces um, pushing ahead in this, amazing, in this amazing environment. So thank you for, for being here. So I wanted to start this by, um, by going back in time. Uh, this is um, a rock. Uh, this is part of a list that the British Museum put together of 100 objects that have a significant impact on humanity. And that list starts 1.8 billion years ago with this rock. Um, and the significance of this rock is called the Olduvai Hand Axe. The significance of this rock is it's the first evidence of mankind creating a tool, developing technology, and putting that technology to use. At the other end of that list, just uh, a couple of years old, uh, that the B British Museum curated, is this object. So, 1.8 billion years ago, up to this. This is a solar lantern. It's increasingly common. It's incredibly simple. All it does is it takes photons from the sun and it converts them into electricity. And it does that simply and it does it cheaply. So that anyone, anywhere, can get power. And I don't just mean light flick on the light, which is incredibly important, but the ability to charge a cell phone, the ability to connect with neighbors, with friends, with family, the, kinetic, the ability to learn, to educate, to communicate, all comes from this. Big span of time. The thing that connects these things, apart from both being on that list in the British Museum, is they both have their hearts in East Africa. And East Africa is the biggest market for this. So Claudia already talked a little bit about the statistics that sit behind this image. This is an image from NASA. It's a composite image taken over time, and it shows the world at night. Notice the darkness. That's the over one billion people who don't have any access to the things that we all take for granted. So, notice Africa, 600 million people. And notice East Africa. So there's a huge opportunity, a huge opportunity for all of us to tackle one of the biggest problems that faces humanity. So Sustainable Development Goal 7 is universal access to electricity. It's achievable because of extraordinary entrepreneurs starting to engage in this space. It's a huge challenge, but it is achievable, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Why are we so confident about it being achievable? Part of it is a pure technology story, a pure technology story, which is photovoltaics uh, have improved in efficiency and have come down in, in price colossally over the last five, eight years. Um, and storage is doing the same. So batteries, lithium-ion storage is doing the same, coming down very, very fast. As we look forwards, we see batteries continuing to come down in, in, in cost and increasing in capacity. At the very same time, we've seen a trend of radically improved efficiency. So LED light bulbs. Um, when I was a kid, didn't exist. Five, seven years ago, you got this new innovation and, again, radical trans transformation in efficiency, which allows light uh, and very efficient energy use to come off of solar panels and batteries. 
So these fundamental trends are really transforming our appreciation of energy and our ability to get power to people without a very expensive grid and without fossil fuels. There's this combination of, of pieces that are coming together. And then let's add another component. So over the last decade or so, companies have been plugging away in East Africa, trying to bring power to people using this trend in technologies. And what they've started to do is see the blend of adding to that mobile payments. So what mobile payments do is they allow us to buy capital goods on an incremental basis and to amortize that cost over the life of the capital good. So what they really do is they offer radical, radical affordability. So for the first time in history, we can make appliances that generate power off your own roof anywhere in the world. You can pay for it by remote payments on your cell phone, and you can do that in an incremental way over two or three year lifetime of the product so that its marginal cost is very, very low. So it's now radically affordable. We can leapfrog the grid with this technology, uh, and we can get this into millions of homes and households across the world. Uh, and this is really something that um, young, industrious, thoughtful entrepreneurs have spearheaded the way through. So it's a genuine example of a real innovation. So let me talk a little bit about some of the companies in this space. Uh, one is a company called D-Lite. Uh, D-Lite has been going for about 10 years. D-Lite started from uh, the extraordinary perseverance of its founders and the extraordinary commitment of investors who saw the potential for what a company like this could do. And what D-Lite did is that they started getting products in, into people's homes, but they do three things extraordinarily well. First, understand the market understand who needs these things, what can they afford, how do we create value with them. Uh, second, uh, they understand how to build a company. It's one thing to say there's a market, it's another thing to build a company that actually gets products into that market cheaply enough for people to afford them and to co-create value with them. And third, they offer uh, an ability and a leadership team to hold that company together and to grow it, not just in Kenya, not just in East Africa, but in more than 40 countries now around the world. So this is a company that now turns over from very, very little when they first started, nothing, that now turns over 10 millions of dollars and now has hundreds of thousands of customers. So that's what impact capital can do. And this is a real business that's scaling and bringing power to people at a real scale. And then let's talk about many times we get asked as investors in this space, what do we look for? What do we look for? So first, we, we look for leadership. We look for the ability to build companies. And we look for the ability to pivot. So if you look at a company like Bbox, uh, also an energy company in this space. Extraordinary leadership, extraordinary vision, but they radically changed their business model early in the game so that they could really fundamentally understand the customer and deliver to that customer. So, terrific amount of innovation and improvement in this space. What do we look for? We look for leadership. What do we look for? We look for an ability to build companies and to get into emerging markets uh, and to do that in a deep and profound way. Not to sit back in, in Silicon Valley, not to sit back uh, here in Switzerland, but to get out there and do it. And that's the ability to make the world a better place. When people come to me and say, what does it take for an investor to support us? What's the technology that we're gonna back? Actually, the answer I give is that we don't back technology. We back people. People are at the heart. It's you that's at the heart of making this happen. There's an extraordinary set of challenges out there 
there's an extraordinary set of opportunities out there that lock together with those challenges. What we look for is people who have the combination of both humility as well as confidence. Confidence is an outside thing. It's an outward-looking thing. We need confidence because we want to take people with us on the journey. Confidence is about saying, we, we can do this, even when everybody around us says we can't and the system is fixed, or appears to us fixed that we can't break through it. We need that. We also need to hold the humility piece, and that's an internal piece. The humility piece, it seems contradictory, but the humility piece is the mind of a scientist. I have a hypothesis. I go out to the world, I try to prove it. I do everything I can to make this work, but when the data tell me that I don't have a product that works in this market, I listen. I pivot, and I do better. So, the world expects a lot from us. We have a lot to give to it. The challenge out there, and I know that you are just so extraordinarily capable of this challenge, is to step up. Thank you.